Uh, so what's up, everybody? I I guess uh, what's going on, Martha? How are you? Doing good. All right, we're doing good. That's what's up. Well, I guess um, I don't know, man. I wanted to kind of take some time and kind of invite everybody to a conversation real quick. Um, I know we uh for a while and I've been talking about kind of getting together and having some conversation, having some talk. So uh, we finally get a chance to do it, guys. So we're, we're going to do it and we want to kind of bring you guys into a conversation just about our transition to Dallas, um, Texas. I would ask one piece of housekeeping. I would ask you guys first to... Um, like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> guys, this is about to be a session for me. So I want do you Do it twice. To, <laughs> I'm sure Martha wants you guys to... To tap into this Do one. it four times. Oh, Five. Wow. Do it as many. Find a cousin, a wow. friend, and she inviting an the family uncle, for this, uh, this. Whoever you can find. Find someone on the street and get them to wow. like, comment, and subscribe. Wow. If, does it sound like I'm saying comment? Comment and subscribe. Wow. Who is calling? Wow. That is actually going to be my, um, my pediatric. People, I know this might seem kind of odd. I'm going to answer this while Martha talks to you guys really quick. Hello? Okay. That was just an automated call to remind me that we have Grace to automated. support me. I know that was probably a little bit tacky, but hey, it's okay. This is what we do. Um, the second piece of housekeeping before we get into this conversation, Martha, really, really quick. Hold on, guys. The girls, uh, the girls are still noise. here. So I got to do this. Girls, could you guys quiet down on the... I don't Set. know what you're doing. And close your door. And close your doors because our YouTube audience just want to talk to us right now. Thank you. And as you guys know, this year we uh, transitioned from Richmond, Virginia, all the way to Dallas. I think it was, what, 23 hours. Uh, uh, almost a day, almost, yeah. Almost a full day. And uh, man, what a transition it was. And so, I mean, I think we, Martha and I, we've talked about a lot of things kind of together in passing, but I don't think we've ever really sat down and kind of walked through what the transition felt like. And a lot of you have actually asked us about our transition. You've asked us to sit down and have that conversation and we've gotten so busy. So we're a little bit more settled now, so... Now would be a good time. Yeah, I think it'll be a great time. Um, we transitioned from where? We transitioned from Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, we transitioned from Richmond, yeah. Virginia. We were there for about three years. Yep. Prior to going to Richmond, uh, we were living in North Carolina. So to us, that was a bit more like city-like, which if you live in Richmond or Virginia, you probably would say the opposite. Yeah. And then we moved to Dallas, Texas in June. Yeah. Was it June? It was June. Well, the girls and I definitely moved in June. We moved a little bit earlier than Gordon. He came down to prepare the way for us. Um, but then yeah. he had to stay back a little. Maybe it was just a few yeah. days. We all moved in June. Yeah, it may have been. It may. Yeah, it was a few weeks. I think I may, I may, think I may have came like a week. No. Few days. It was a few days. It was a few days um, mm -hmm. before you guys, because I do remember, and we're gonna bring his name up. My good brother, um, Karan Pete. Pete, yes. My dog. He was a godsend. Man, my dog still is. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. We're gonna talk about him a lot, but um, I came out a little bit earlier, Martha. I will be honest. I appreciate the compliment, but prepare the way is a a great compliment because I it maybe get it so y'all can come, but. This transition for me has been an eye opener, yeah. and a lot of revelations. The only thing that's that was prepared in coming here is the struggle that matured me. Yeah, and the luggage <laughs> and, the, and luggage. the furniture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the little bit of furniture we brought. <laughs> for those of you that follow us, we already talked about our transition from North Carolina to Richmond, right? Did we talk about it? I don't know if we talked about that. No, we didn't really talk about it. Oh, well, I, we're from North Carolina. We were there the majority of our lives. You guys know the story of us meeting and being married and being together and having our children. Uh, we probably never thought we would leave North Carolina. We were in a small town that is amazing because I love North Carolina to keep it a band. Um, we were in Elizabeth City, EC. What's up? My wife was from Cofield. And uh, again, we had dreams of moving. I don't think 
kind I of always at, wanted to move. We wanted to move. I don't think if we thought, I don't know if we really felt as though we were going to ever really move considering having the children, being kind of content or settling maybe. And maybe all of my husband's settling. family was in Elizabeth City, so and your, it was hard for me to believe that yeah. he would ever leave. And your family was only 45 an hour minutes, away, yeah. an hour Max, so. Max, an hour. Having, you know, especially- Not even, especially not at all. <laughs> knowing that I had girls and they had family, because mm -hmm. I wanted them to understand, because I grew up in family, and I understand the value of family. Um, now, on the other hand, there were some things that I did desire and wanted to kind of go after. But after I had children, I was like, hey, I would rather for them to have family than me just, you know, go after a few things. But Martha was motivational in pushing me to to leave because she just always was like she wanted to. I just always wanted more. She wanted to And go. I wanted to ensure uh, that our family was exposed to yeah. more of a variety, to see a different place. Because I came from such a small town and although I moved an hour away to Elizabeth City, that was still essentially yeah. a small town. So, yeah, yeah. And, and I think I think it was it was good. The thing was though, with me, I always had big dreams of being in big places and doing big things. Mm -hmm. When I had a family, though, I was like, man, I just felt like family unit was more important than those things. But I didn't want that to be our limitation. So, yeah. yeah. Well, we and finally moved, we, right? So let's get there. Let's get there. Oh, okay. I, uh, what happened was we were in this place where you were like, "Hey, I'm ready to go," and I think you were getting you were getting to this space where you felt like you we would never go. And normally, and a little and normally when you get a little, when you get like that, you get restless. So you just kept asking me, "What's next?" And I kept telling you, "I, I don't, don't know. I don't know." <laughs> right? I was like, "Hey, right now, I don't know." Um, but I did tell you that I remember being like, "Hey, God is going to open a door." It's going to be through a door for ministry, and it's going to be an opportunity for us to leave the space. Yeah. Um, and he did just that. Sure enough, he did it. He did just that, and God blessed us to have an opportunity to be in Richmond, Virginia, which I loved R Richmond. We got there. I was at a lovely church, um, the Life Church, and the Life Church RVA, which is, which is doing great work. You guys go check them out, the Life Church RVA, Pastor Vernon Gordon. And, and Ashley Gordon, Gordon, they they are they are doing a great work in Richmond, Virginia, killing right now. Um, and so, yeah, we got there. I was blessed to be on staff there and serve. And then, um, I guess I'm doing all the talking because it's, it's all just no. You're fine. Negative. You're okay, fine. I'm good. Tell the story. Right, good. And so then we get there. We're serving. Great opportunity. Great space. Great place. Um, I just all of a sudden just get this. Holy discontentment, like out of the blue, I'm just like, uh, hmm, what is this? It's hard to explain, um, but I just could not get settled. Um, and from there, I just was all over the place, man, because I was struggling with, to be honest, leaving Richmond, which I was in my call space, like kind of a grace, leaving there and then going to where I just didn't know what was next. And God just left me out there hanging, guys. I'm not going to lie. I was like, Lord, give me clear direction. He just never, he never like said, you're going here, you're doing that. It was just like he never quite said it. Excuse I me. I need to cut that down. Oh, it's my, my computer. Sorry about that. So he never... He never said it from there. Um, so I just and was, we talked about different places. Yeah, but we never really settled on one. So yeah, we never did. Now let me say this though: Can we can we say that when we were in Elizabeth City? I don't remember. You know, we used to say a lot of things. We Earlier about, on in yeah. Elizabeth City, we honestly talked about going to Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. and you know how you get on Zillow and you're looking at all these beautiful houses and you're doing your searches and you're talking about. Um, different cities and states and what they have to offer. And, yeah. and then we kind of started weighing the pros and cons. Yeah. And after doing so, we kind of just settled on Dallas, Texas. Because yeah. at the time, the cost of living was low. It was. We saw a lot of beautiful homes. Yeah. Seemed like there was a lot of access and opportunities in Dallas. Uh, Mary was living with us at the time. Yeah. So she had, she heard those conversations as well. Yeah. And it's 
crazy that it came around full circle yes, that we're now all here yep. <laughs> in Dallas, Texas. We're all here. So you definitely have to be careful what you speak out That's into crazy. the atmosphere because God is listening. It's crazy. He is. Not the universe. And if I'm not so, mistaken, I think about, uh, you, you are funny. Not the universe. Martha, <laughs> what is happening right now? You're about to get this lit up. Oh, wow. It's okay. Hi. It's okay. I can take it. Guys. Whoa. <laughs> oh, so... It, it was Chicago. We talked about Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, Chicago, and uh-huh. Dallas. And you also wanted to go to Atlanta. Yes. I I want to go where the black people are. Yo, Martha <laughs> Dove is in full force today. That's where he wanted to go. Really? He Martha? was excited about going to Atlanta to be around his people. Guys, let's... But if you're not black, we love you as well. Guys, I promise. let's insert a pin there. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what it was. The thing about Atlanta that I did like is people, black when, people I, were when I went to Atlanta, okay, for the first time, I went to a restaurant and this had me in tears. Young lady came to wait on us. Uh, wherever we go, like the guys I w- we would go, we would always ask the waiters and waitresses, what, what did they think we did? Whenever we go other places, like I won't say the, the cities, but they would be like, hey, are you rappers? Are you musicians? It always be something like that. We went to Atlanta. We asked the young lady, what did she think we, we were? And she said, uh, are you investors? Uh, are you uh, a lawyer? Like what the, the, the field of, and none of those things, musicians or rappers are not bad. But when she looked at us, she just saw so much more. I think she said, are you engineers? Like her, her, her train of thought as she was guessing what we were, let me know that she's exposed to people from our cultural context actually doing other things right. other more than what the stereotype in a variety of fields in the entertainment space mm-hmm. say we do and it rocked me i was like thank you i was like i need to be at a place like this and whenever i went through the drive throughs it didn't matter how i communicated they just understood what i was saying i was like yo the a is my people <laughs> i'm not gonna front but other than that i wanted to be where all people were <laughs> all people um, so anyways, Dallas, like Martha said, she was talking about Mary. Go ahead, Martha. I just had to put a pin there. You yeah. And about. even when we were in Richmond, we were in Richmond for like three years. Yeah. And there would be some moments where I kind of felt lonely, hadn't really found a solid community. By the end, I did. Um, I was able to find a few friends in Richmond and all of you, I love you. Um, I made a few friends. However, I just still was unsettled where I just felt like there was more for us, more for our family. And there were conversations that Gordon and I would have where we talked about potentially moving where Mary was. She was getting older and it was about the time where she was thinking about having kids. We weren't really settled or sure about, you know, the possibility of it being as soon, but um, we, we had those conversations and I remember there being even a season or I wouldn't say a season. There were there was like a week span to where Mary and I, we had a little quarrel, you know, siblings have quarrels and um, we weren't really getting along. And I told Gordon after that, like, I'm not moving to Dallas. I don't want to go. Forget it. I'm not going where she is. We need to establish ourselves somewhere else. So you all didn't know that. Um, and prior to that, when I would have the conversations with Gordon about us moving and being close to Mary, he would give me a hard no every time. Like, no, we're not going to have like the Mary Martha duo. We're not going to do that because as you all know, we're inseparable. So I think And I'm not going to speak for you, (laughs) but he kind of had the assumption that it would just be me and her and we would be so locked in that maybe I would forget about him or I don't know. But in that season, it was not only a hard no for Gordon, but it kind of flip flop because it was a hard no for him. And I'm begging him like, babe, you know, let's consider moving near Mary. Like it would be so cool for me to be with her again. Like I would feel so much more at ease and you know if you have a twin you know how it is the love is real it's a different kind of love it's not like a friend love or you know a little normal sibling love like you feel like you're you're like this like you're one (laughs) so I felt like Mary and I had done so well apart it had been like 10 years 10 or 11 years and I didn't even realize it of us being separated 
and us being able to establish our lives apart from each other. But then we finally got to that season to where I started to question, hey, can we move near Mary? And he was just like, uh-uh, girl, forget it. We're not doing it. <laughs> um, do you want to talk about that or yeah, I, I, it wasn't. On that? I, I never thought for one minute I'll, I'll be for, forgotten. Uh, one thing about it, when I first met you girls, there was never a time where I ever wanted. To, I never came between you. Um, I always, I always from the beginning. If you guys heard the story, treated both of you similar, loved both of you like, and I let even the Mary like this matriculation into you girls maturing. I let them decide when it was time, not me. So I, I let Mary can live with us however long she needed to. Mm -hmm. um, like I just had that mentality. That's how I was kind of, when I came into you girls' lives, I realized I was coming into a pair's life. Because twins are close, but you girls had a different type of- We were inseparable. Your bond was <laughs> different, even for some of like the challenges you girls came through together. It was just like twins and challenges that you've overcome. You girls were very, very- Close. So, with that being said, never was a. I thought things would go that go opposite way. Once Mary and you girls started to mature and get confidence enough, because truth be told, you guys, you you played, you fed, you you built things off of each other's confidence. So one of you were weak, the other one was strong. It's like that's that was y'all. It's kind of mm -hmm. play. You girls didn't really know how to function separate. You knew how to function separate, but. To a certain capacity. And we did that for 10 years, functioning right? separate. So what happens is through those 10 years, I think that we had the challenges that we needed to go through. We had to we had to make it back and become one and understand how to go through hard times and not turn our backs on one another and know that even if it's a hard time, we like that because you've been like that with your sister. So when we got married, we had to kind of become one. And once we had a family, it was rolling. I was like, okay, this this is good. So why did you give me the no, the hard no? Um, I gave you the hard no because you definitely weren't wasn't ready. It, I you, wasn't you, ready. You weren't ready for you girls to come back yet. Like, and when we were in Richmond, when I was asking, yeah, really, you weren't ready in Richmond either because I felt like that coming back had a lot to do with the challenge of being in a new area and you already having a hard time. Oh, so he friends. saw me. So I saw he you saw me go through that adjustment of being it, in a new space. Yeah. And me kind of being guarded. Very much so. And so because, what happens and what happens. But you gotta think about it. I was raised in a very strict household. Yep. My mom and dad, they did the best they could, yep. but they raised us in a very strict household. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of like safeguards mm -hmm. and like very strong parameters placed around us. So in terms of us being as social as we would have liked to be, because of that, those tight parameters, <laughs> um, it was hard, you know, for us to learn how to socialize and really connect with people in a real way. So we were in Elizabeth City for in a good 12, 13 years. So by the end of that journey, I had established relationships with other people. It took yeah. me a while, it takes so, but it, it takes always so takes me a long time to adjust and to so, really get so, closely connected so, with people. So my hard no to you. So in that three years, so my hard no that to, wasn't long enough so, for me. So my hard no to you was I, I, I have an understanding of how you were raised. But I also have an understanding of like where we where we have to kind of go. And I'm like, if I allow you to take the easy way out by going back to what you know in a comfort zone and don't allow this time of real exposure of to you having to learn. Me. Because the thing is, either you learn or for the rest of your life, you got to have it like this. And if it's not, nothing, everything has to surround around you having that. And then we got to build whatever from, from that. We'll never be able to build from. So, of this. are you kind of saying that an introvert has to sprout into an extrovert? No, I think uh, being is a, that what I you're think saying? Being an introvert and and you're you are introvert, right? Mad respect for introverts. And, tr and truth be told, I am a uh, what do you call it? Omnivert. Om omnivert, but omnivert I don't in, agree in with that. You're of, an extrovert. I don't all get, day. I don't get my energy from people. Like they don't. People don't make me recharge. I give it out. 
but I typically got to come to a place where it's just me and I'm just mm -hmm. like to get back. I just, it is what it is. But I have mad respect. And crazy thing is a lot of my friends are introverts too. Mad respect for you guys. And I, I understand the challenge. But you have that in tandem with being a twin that- That makes it when, worse. When, when the parameters <laughs> were set around you, like they were, may have been set for a good reason, but kind of like the tr the trauma that it kind of caused, like you girls to like almost bond in a a trauma bond. Yeah, it's like no, no. I'm serious. No. It's like it's like you're bonded, and from the trauma you're bonded, and so it's like your default. Like when you are getting out here and having to. Yeah, she's my go to. Go, it's so, like, but she's your go -to. but I think even aside from us being introverts, because I'm a twin. I honestly didn't feel the need to really socialize because I'm like, I got my girl. Yes. Like, I got my best friend. Which people with twins, I would encourage you, if you have twins, it's cute while they're if young. Your they got each other. If your kids are twins. If your kids are twins, I I encourage you to, you have to foster environments where they they understand the value of community. Community Teach and expanding. Them how to expand and how to their interact sphere. in their sphere, to love one another, but also to invite other people in because you cannot make it in life. Right. It's God's design for us to have community. And I would recommend yeah. that as well because even in school, Mary and I, if you didn't grow up with us, which is really stupid now that you're I'm looking not, back you're at not it. Stupid. I didn't say we were stupid, I said it is stupid. Okay. The fact that we were dressed just alike. Yeah. My dad had us in all the same classes and he wanted to build camaraderie and a sense of like reassurance that your sister, your sibling is going to be there no matter what. And we definitely could confide in each other, but we felt like there was such a safe haven and like there was like, and I don't want to say a stronghold, but yeah. <laughs> there was, there was like some tight parameters around us. Like there was, there were shields. Yeah. around us to where, like I said earlier, we didn't feel the need to expand our sphere and our circle. And we would literally have friends, and but they, it was like a never-ending revolving door because they always felt like the third wheel because we were just always in each other's faces. Yeah. And that for us like created this, this narrative where no matter how old we got, eventually it was just hard for us to branch out. Yeah. So the fact that Mary left when we were in Elizabeth City, because she was living with us even after we got married, the fact that she left, that was big. That had to have been and, God. And, and let's be honest, though. But it was good for, it was good honest, for us A lot when of that, she left. I knew that was going to happen, mm -hmm. and I had to navigate it that way. Mm -hmm. Because I had an understanding of everything you explained. Yeah. I knew the 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 gravitas around your connection. I also knew the again, your dad did a wonderful job and he, he was he was trying to protect, not insulate. He was trying yeah. to protect and incubate because he knew and incubate something great. You right. Not, he not, knew not, all the ideals and yeah, the negative, you know, connotations and Absolutely. perspectives and Absolutely. just all the theories that people had that were against God. Absolutely. And he wanted to make sure that like we we kept it locked in as a father. to where, yeah, yeah, to where we knew, you know, God is savior. We're gonna live a certain way. He set a certain standard in our household. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't, if he, if you didn't even look remotely close to that standard, he's like, oh no, you all need to stay away from them. Don't socialize with them. And although it was good intentions, yeah. it didn't make us as well rounded as but, I would like for us and, to be until later on in life. And, I, and me meeting Mr. Man here, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that really um, helped. Yeah. Even I, with my perspective about people and just yeah. connecting with people in general. And I think his intention was, he, he probably did discern things and was like, hey, I need to kind of- It benefited us in many ways. Because I understand as a male, like I have all girls, so I get it. I'm like, man, I have to be kind of in front of trying to protect yeah. in a way, like in a way. But that's why, and again, there are a lot of things your kids will never understand context around. Like no, when you do certain things, they're not going to get it. Right. And you can't always, like, you got to depend on God that later in life, mm -hmm. after they take it however, that God will reveal to them what it was and they'll finally get it one day. Right. But it's also important, though, as our children begin to matriculate, to, to, to mature into a certain age, 
that we we ask God for wisdom and how and to how parent. to give them context and even communicate with them in a way to explain why even if they don't understand you put it on the table hey here's why we do this right and i hear business leaders anybody building an organization always talk about it's important to know your why right mm -hmm. i think in your family it's important to know your why it's not just because i said so right no it's because this is the way that we're going to be raising a family according to what we believe according to scripture right mm -hmm. we get that but also practically why we don't do this and go there is because of this. And let me also give you another layer of how this li how it lives out. Right. Right? And, and you do that. They're not going to always get it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to give context. and so Because as parents, not only are we responsible for stewarding their lives, yeah. but we're also responsible for stewarding their perspectives. Yes. And if we can steward their perspectives well it'll help to somewhat steward their steps. And I'll be honest with you, that word perspective is powerful. I think it's overlooked because perspective says that we both can be looking at the same thing. And you I might see it completely different. You see a peanut, I see peanut butter. Right. You see peanut butter, I see... Like, it's, it's levels to perspective. So I think... Right. And that was kind of like one of my so, dad things. I know we're trying to move... Yeah, on. so Anyways, to move it full circle, if yeah. you feel like there were points where... Mary and I seemed a little stuck up or antisocial. I yeah. promise that's not what it that was. What we it weren't was, against guys. you. Nah. We weren't trying to, you know, be above the crowd or anything. That was just how we were raised and we're twins. So we were just yeah. so connected. So if I need to apologize, I am sorry. This is, this is Martha's sorry. <laughs> this is my guys. confessional. Please, Receive it. <laughs> please. That, that's going to also be in the, in the head, like in the, when we title the clip, Martha says she's sorry. She apologizes. That's funny. I think the world's gonna. Yeah. But, so but, uh, let me say. Can I say this? Yeah. Go All ahead. Right, so my no was predicated on me having an understanding of the history, um, and also I realized I was like, okay, I knew that. I knew what God had called me, and since you married me, it was like, hey, you got to go on this journey with me. I know what he said. I didn't know exactly how to get there. I don't kind of get it. So I was like, hey, in these ten years, we're gonna be navigating a lot of things, and I need us. To figure out what it is. I need us to not run away from one another when it gets hard. Or if we do get in these tight situations to learn how to navigate back. To learn how to say, you know, it's not okay even if it gets tight. For us to feel like we can make it without one another. It's like, no, we're in this together. Even if it gets tight and we're mad a few days. It's like, no, we can't make Like, we're together. We're in it. And I felt like going back to that would... Create a divide? Create a bit of... Even though one thing about Mary... Just as well as it, if it was on me on the other side, uh, if if Mary called me about advice or uh, JJ called me about advice or she called like when it goes the other way, we never divide. Like that's just not yeah. Because he we, we, he we, may have initially thought that Mary was going to be the one to say, "Girl, you need to I leave did. him, forget I, him." I never, I never but did. she honestly gives me the opposite advice. She's like, did. "Girl, you need to stick it out. This is your husband. God has called you all to a certain thing." Like she's still trying to encourage me to stay. Yeah, honestly. I never did think she would do that because we're still even after sixteen, almost absolutely. seventeen years, absolutely. Although it seems like we've been married a long time, we're still discovering Absolutely. each other and learning how to navigate. We're discovering ourselves. And we're ourselves. still learning how to stay together. Yeah. Still learning how to be unified. Still learning how to be one. We're still learning, how, still to happening. Lay, learning how to lay our wills down <laughs> and the future that we want, it, want for ourselves to lay it down for the future that God wants for us. And that's always a challenge. And you, whoever tells you the opposite is lying. Yeah. Yeah. That's Sometimes some people do get to that resolve a little bit earlier depending on what happened to them in life and some people are easy, but yeah, it's always a challenge in laying that down. But I'll say this, my no was because I knew where God wanted. I knew, I didn't know exactly how it's going to happen. I didn't know exactly where it was, but I knew it was kind of in this vein and I knew we had to figure that out. So I felt like we needed to be in those positions so that God could grow us. Right. So he could grow you in that area of people because we're called to people mm -hmm. and you would have to figure out how to navigate that, especially with us being, we're influencers, but we get to sit behind a camera. What happens when we, when God opened up doors to just be around people and they're all looking to you to be like, Martha, you have something that is important that I want to, that, that, that pours into my life and they're looking to you. And it's like, you can still be uncomfortable, but we can't like run from it. 
Mm-hmm. So I was like, man, this is great. But over time, it just started to kind of, that started to kind of weigh on me in this season too, a little bit. It, it definitely did. I was like, okay, man, I've like, Lord, I need you because I've got to do, something has to happen. And then so he, it wasn't just that. But then my heart dig it up, just the discontentment. I was like, maybe God, this is not not because times were hard, but I was like, God, you got to do something. So, make a long story short, was praying, was leaning into it, and honestly, guys, Dallas was not. I'll be honest, until the end, I was not like it wasn't Dallas. It was not. We had and no- I was asking about Dallas, Mm-mm. but when then finally Gordon somehow, you know, offered, hey, well, maybe we should move near your sister. And like I said, at that time, it had flip-flopped, and I was telling him, uh-uh, we need to find another location because I'm not going there. <laughs> yeah. um, so what happened that shifted yeah, your that's, perspective that's or your decision? After I cried my face off uh, in, in the office with Vernon, and he looked at me, and Vernon, you cried. You did get a tear out, but you probably you looked at me like, this nigga crazy. But I appreciate the tear you gave me. Like it touched my heart. I was like, man, thanks, Brandon, for crying for me while I'm He with, worked with hard me. to conjure that up, right? <laughs> no, no, he actually didn't work hard. Oh, okay. He was more so concerned. Like, man, Dove is really. Why did you cry? Because I was torn. Because, all right, so ministry is challenging. I was at a place where, let's say this. So if you're in ministry, you're at a place that's actually growing, right? I'm at a place where I am being respected and even honored for who it is that I feel like God is calling me, right, to be. So that's being verified in my encounters with people, that the grace of my life, even as a pastor, is being, like I'm operating, I'm moving in that direction. Even though there were challenges where I would be moved one place, I would be unsure. I didn't know, like, again, it's challenges any job. So some days I'm like, man, I'm with it. Some days I'm like, I don't know if I'm cut out for it. Some days I'm like, I, you know, I, I went through that. But at the core of it, I'm leading worship. I'm I'm helping to write like helping to write songs. I'm helping to build. I'm a builder. So I'm like, man, I'm getting to do something. Mm. And I'm seeing the fruit of it. And I'm involved with a brother that I respect. Vernon is a leader of leaders. He is an integral brother. Like, and I'm like, bro, I am a part of a dream team. Even though it was challenges at the time, I was like, I'm a part of a dream team, right? So when I'm sitting in there, I'm thinking about all the people that I'm pastoring, Pastor Danielle, Pastor Alvin, uh, Ms. Mariah, uh, you need like people that I love, like I love them. Mm-hmm. I lo- like I've grown a heart toward them. I would pray for them. I think about their families, like they're on my heart, even right now, all the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking about when I leave. He still talks about y'all, to be oh honest. Oh my God, I love them so much. So I'm like... I can't believe that I'm here having a conversation. And the ministry is just getting back booming. We, we're planning another campus. You got Omar who's coming. It's about to boom. Like, we're just, this thing is just getting back rolling. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting here like, I can't believe, like, what am I doing? Like, what is this? Like, God, am I walking away from you? Am I leaving too early? Am I allowing it being hard to push me away from a season of greater development in building, greater greater development in my leadership. When I'm at the table, having conversations, getting exposure to leaders who have built amazing things and surrendered their life to God. Like, did I abort because of these conditions? Mm-hmm. Did I let this pull me out? Because once I'm processed, then even though it's a little bit tough, I can. Our family is gonna come up. This is life. Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting there wrestling in front of my brother with just all of this. And I'm like, what am I going to? What? What, what am I going to go to? Not only that, I'm getting paid to do what it is, regardless of whether or not it's two or $300,000. The thing is, sky's the limit. It always can go up as you go on, right? Mm-hmm. I'm still in a, a, a doing, doing well for people. And I'm just like, man, have I worked this field? Did I get everything God wants? So it's like all oh, that's going through my head. Then I'm thinking about my family. Like, okay, my children are growing in the ministry. They're being discipled. Mm-hmm. Like everywhere they go now, people are like, oh my God. You know, they're like, oh my God. Um, you need to cut your volume down. I don't even know how to cut my volume down on, the, on my thing. On your I'm phone? gonna catch it. I cut it down on my phone. It's my, it's my, it's my computer. Um, it's my computer. So um that's Pastor Lauren right there. Lauren. I love you, Lauren. That's Lauren, you'll see this. But anyways, though, 
All those things are going on. So I'm sitting in front of him and those tears are falling out of my eyes because I realize that I am such at a space where it's just this this, this holy discontentment that's there that I know I can't say. Mm-hmm. And so that was that. that. That me seeing all of that, understanding the beauty of that, but on the other side realizing that no matter what that is, there there is a there is a go. So you got There's the urgency go to me. go. Yeah. There, there was a, I won't even say urgency, there was not a peace. In where I was. Mm-hmm. And normally, regardless of how hard something is, for me, the way God operates with me is he'll give me peace even if I'm disturbed. Mm-hmm. He'll give me peace even if I'm agitated. But when he he'll unsettles peace, you, but it's time to make a move. he unsettles me right. in that place that you, can't, Genesis 12. That you can't touch <laughs> in, in me, not my belly, not my... It's like a space, like a soulish space in me that's just like, you're unsettled. I'm like, oh man. Really, God? Mm-hmm. So I got to make a move. I didn't know why. So we got there. And once I got there, my conversation with him, instead of, God, should I stay or go? It changed. And it moved from, okay, where do you want me? Then it moved from, okay, if you don't tell me exactly, here's some spaces and some places. Tell me no. So that's how we work. I'll go from stay or go. It's like, okay, I'm, settled. I'm unsettled. That means go. I ask for confirmation. It'll come through other people. It'll be spoken to, I'll seek counsel, all those things that happen to people are saying it, then I'll get to a place where it's like, okay, God, where? And he might not just specifically say where. Then I'll say, okay, well, here's some places, God. Is your blessing on it? Is it okay? Mm-hmm. Or no? Yeah, Nate. So as I went through that, that's how I got to Dallas. Like I was sitting down one day and it was just like, oh, it is Dallas. And I'm like, man. It's like, go to Dallas. I know he was like, God, no, what's happening? <laughs> no, well, at, th- at this particular point, I had already made, I already told Vernon that I wasn't going to be there. So I said no when I was leaving before I even knew where I was going. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until I settled and closed the fact that I would be leaving until the conversation between me and God could, go, could open up to help me figure out where, where I was going to go. Mm-hmm. So I took that leap of faith. So it was Dallas. I was kind of settled on it. And um, here's the thing. Here's what I said, guys, and here's where I jacked up at, and I'll tell anybody. And you guys have done this before. When you're leaving with a family my size, you got to jump out. Of, you got to stay spiritual, but you got to jump out and be a little more practical at the same time because right. I was dependent so much on God in that moment and in those wrestlings and tussling that I was just like, Oh, God, just, God he's just, just going to open up go, the realms my of faith, heaven. My, and- just, he's just going to open the heaven. Now, let me say this. He did. But in any move I make, or anything I do from now on, my lesson, my lesson, even in leadership as I help others is, I am going to work much harder to be ahead once I know it's a change when it comes to transitioning and preparing and counting the cost. Kind of going back to the decision in the decision-making process. Yeah. When we were making the decision to move, um, how I told you it flip-flopped and I was saying, hey, babe, let's consider Dallas where Mary is. He was saying no. And I forgot this until he was talking. Um, I told God, I said, if it's meant for us to move closer to Mary, it will be confirmed to me because you're going to settle it in my husband's heart. He had so many no's to where I was just like, well, maybe we won't move to Dallas. We'll just have to figure it out here in Richmond. I'll have to get my life together and just figure out how to navigate. And my prayer to God would be, if it is meant for us to move, settle it in his heart. So it's crazy how when the decision was made, I wasn't even for the decision. Like I said, so when we pray and we ask God to move, he is listening. He will move. Because, you know, even us talking about it now, it's like, wow, God, you are orchestrating this behind the scenes. Yeah. You are working in your providence behind the scenes. And you heard our prayer. What kind of, that, that is so phenomenal to me that we serve a God who has so many responsibilities, has so many requests, but he still hears ours. Yes. And he answers because I'm telling you, when Gordon told me yes, I was saying no, yeah. and I forgot that I prayed to God that when it's confirmed for us to go, <laughs> show my husband. Yep. When we call to the Lord like that and we pray, in spite of the situation, it's like, no, don't, get it, don't get it twisted. Yeah. He hears. I'm we're listening. Children. Yeah. He's listening, and his arm, again, is even not even too weak to save us. So I kind of thought about that in that moment. I will say this, though. Um, 
in the prior seasons, it 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 has always seems as though our individual prayers to God have happened in some type of way. I think that's been one of the things that's been like it's worked out. So it's like I'm talking to God about something over here. You talking to God about something over there. We kind of mention it to God with one another. Um, my hope is in this next season, because I feel like what we got to accomplish is that, and not even just this next season, but going forward, that it won't, and again, I know God is operating in both of us and then come together, but I pray that even when he speaks to both of us uh, individually, that we're still together mm-hmm. when he's saying it. Yeah. And I know, again, when you're married, we, that's how it works, right? It's like you're married, but you still have your own individual relationships and mm-hmm. you're working through things with the Lord by yourself and you're praying for your spouse. That's a, that's a key. She mm-hmm. said that she prayed that the Lord would. Now, that's a teaching moment. She prayed that the Lord would, as a sign to her, settle me and give me peace, right, Mm -hmm. about it. So that's even a sign in some of the people that are watching that are married. They may be with a spouse that feels like they're never, like, on one page. They've tried everything. It's not working. It just goes to show that you can go to the Lord God can and do what we can. On behalf for sure. of you, All he day. can do what he needs to do. Like, you got to stop thinking you can do it with your mouth, with your arguing, with your fussing, with your throwing pots and pans. You have to go to the Lord. Can't especially do a thing. if you have somebody who who knows the Lord. Mm-hmm. You just but depend. it's stubborn. And it's stubborn, like we all are, like I am and you are. Mm-hmm. Um, you go to God, I promise you. You put God on there. Don't tell God, God, cut his I'm leg off. Sit God, like, Lord, on. God, I just pray that you to let him fall down and twist his ankle. Like you can't do that. But praying that the Lord would do what the work that needs to be done in your heart, He will. Do he it. will do it for sure. Because that's what He's done even through the course of our marriage. I'm talking. We still rock like that. Sometimes we're like, Lord, I need you. Yeah. Go over there and tap them right now, Lord. Tonight when they sleep, I pray that. I pray God that you cause a little cold to get in their throat when Choke they get them up. in their sleep. Oh God! Don't do that, guys. <laughs> oh God! Martha <laughs> Dove. That's that's three. Anyways, though, make a long story short. From there, the tap in. Um, we end up. Y'all see um, pop my leg. I tried it. <laughs> I tried to hit the couch. I didn't know her leg was right there. You know, Betty did. Uh, you know, Betty did. So we ended up. Uh, end up. Boom. Getting there. Settled. I end up saying, "All right, let's go." No, what Martha is not telling you is when I was like, because typically I take longer. To make oh a my lord, he takes forever. I tell you why. It it's takes, like baby snail like slow. I tell you why. It's not because I doubt, but it's because I don't want to make a He doesn't move. want to miss God. So I, I be on that. God, it's not like Gideon as much as it is. You're gonna have to show me something because our whole setup is I'm in this thing only because I encountered you, not because. I'm, you know, I seen a preacher that I loved and I just grew up in this environment where I just always wanted to be a preacher and follow you. No, I encountered you, your tangible presence. You touched, you spoke to me. And it's like, I I fear you. And I know that I can't make it without you. So mm-hmm. I can't go up over here just off me. I need you to lead me. So I tend to kind of, I'm walking in the direction, but I'm like, all right, anytime, Lord. You gonna pop out and show me now. Slithering now here's the thing: slow. When I know he speak though, if I know it, I'm gone. And we should. And so what happened is he messed around, spoke, and she was like, "Well, we we go over." And she was looking around, babe, for real. What we need? And before she knew, it, I'm already. We you in the garage? I'm out there in the garage every day, and she because I normally move slow, and it happened so quick. Mm-hmm. This move happened really, really quick. So we finally got there. Finally moved. So fast forward fast to June. Forward. Hold up. Let's yeah, June. Okay, are you gonna don't skip Pete? No, June. That's June. All right. So June. All right. So let me say this. Or late May, June. Late May. Late May. Late June. I already said it. So I was getting things ready, transitioning a new person in position where I was. You went ahead since you were in teaching. You were like, okay, that's the that's the cool thing about education. Education does allow you, and you are an amazing teacher, educator. To go ahead and get on the ball, like you can transfer. Yeah, so I started there. the job hunt. So she started the job hunt there, like kind of rocking. You know, I applied to many different places based on Mary's recommendations on good schools yeah. and good areas. And it's crazy even how that worked out because I had put my applications in like different districts based on, you know, what she 
had told me about the different places uh, to go and to put in my application. And I started an application where I am now. I did not finish the application. Mm. And one of my friends during the time was, she was kind of going through the decision-making process as to whether or not she would go back into education. And I remember one night having that conversation and just encouraging her to go back into the field and how it would be a good decision for her and her family I opened up an email because I had been on the job hunt by now for a good month or so, and I hadn't really heard back anything. And I kind of got disappointed because one of the districts I really wanted to be at, or I thought I wanted to be at, they didn't, they declined my application. Oh. And it was, it was God, honestly. And that night, speaking to her um, over the phone, I got an email from the district that I'm in now. And I did again, I didn't finish my application. God was at work. I didn't fin my, finish my application and they asked me for an interview. And because they were thinking that I was already in Dallas and I wasn't able to do it in person. They made the accommodations for us to do it virtually. And I ended up getting that position. I was like, I finally had gotten another interview as well to a different district. And I guess I forgot to say that. I, got a, I did another interview with a different district that I really wanted and that was the decline. And this district that I did not even finish the application for decided to hire me. So um, right before June, I think it was like a month prior to us moving, I had gotten a job. Um, and I was concerned because for me, yes, I'm a woman of faith, but I am the one that needs to also see a little in the natural as well. So I'm like, we can't move and neither one of us have jobs. We don't have yeah. anything in place. Like, God, I need you to do something. And sure enough, he made a way for me to get a position. Um, it may have even been it was, two weeks. Yeah, it was, I don't know exactly all the logistics, yeah. but it wasn't it was too before. far before we left that yeah. I had um, gotten a position. So on my end, since I was in ministry, right? So my thing was I'm going to Dallas. Now, here's the crazy thing. I came out of a background of banking before I came back into um, ministry. I really was tossed between like what I was going to do. I really didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, now, I wanted two things. So ultimately, I'm, we're going we're gonna to plant a church. It's as simple as that. Like God is, God is doing the work in us so that we can be ready to do his work. He is cultivating the ground. He's lifting up things. He's turning it around for us to look at again. He's, we're doing the Gideon thing. Are you sure this is what you want thing? And then he's doing just all the things, right? Um, Cause this is what's going to happen. That was, that's what, when we first got married, that's what it was. And, and in a game, it is what it is, right? This one over here is just really weird to put with it, but God, God is <laughs> the same prayer. She prayed about my heart. Got thing back on her. Yeah. yeah I got here. Else. I got here and I'm around here like, man, I can't even get a job. Uh, tilling a dip. I'm putting in like regular. I was trying to get something at Best Buy. I was just to the point with Best Buy. I put things in the Walmart. Like nobody, they were like, no, can't hire you. No, can't hire you. I'm like, yo. So I'm not going to lie. I will be honest. I went into a deep, dark, like I started to doubt everything that I did, man. It was so hard. The hardest days. I remember just being at the sink, breaking. I broke down one day so bad, y'all. Because I was just like, Lord, did I miss it? Like, what is happening? Why is this like this? And, you know, Martha's just excited. Just, you know, she with her sister and, you know, she's coming to something and she, her, she has the job there and she's like really optimistic because I think on the front end, it's like, it, it's so good for her. But for me, I just, all of a sudden, y'all, it was just horrible. I felt like I made the worst move, moved to the wrong place. Um, nothing was working. I'm in a place where I have no, inf like nobody knows me. Right. So I can't move in areas where I've worked to build a reputation where mm -hmm. they understand what I am and what I bring. It's, it's starting all over. He's the new guy. So I'm the new guy, but I'm also the new guy that ha brings no reference from anywhere. Right. No anything. So we're in a place really far out that it's not like city. So I'm not like in the mix. We're on the outskirts. I'm on the outskirts. Like So it's like if I was in the mix. People can feel what it is. It's like you seeing somebody on TV and then you getting up on them and you see what that six seven feel like. You're like, man, he he's all. It's like that's the way I am in in how I carry leadership, how I approach situations. It's like you get up on he me. He likes like, to be connected. He likes to be it's, it's close. It's my gifting. And I'm like, man, I don't 
I didn't do any of that, didn't know anybody. You know, I knew. So anyway, so we get here, man, I just went into a tough, tough, deep state of, I would, I would say it's dep- a deep, depressed space that I was like, I mean, I was crying uncontrollably. I couldn't, I just didn't know. I just didn't know. I didn't know how to move. I didn't know how to hustle out here. Like, and I didn't, I didn't know see what... a lot of this. I just knew that his demeanor, yeah, it was bad. his whole persona changed. It, was it shifted bad. when we came. Yeah. And yes, you all would see the connected and the unified family, but behind the scenes, it was rough. It was, it was. And I feel a like we're challenge. still honestly recovering. I think <laughs> right, I think now it's just getting to the place where we are settling our feet in the fact that we are not that we've moved. We've moved on. It's like okay. And we're moving forward. Yeah, like okay, let's <laughs> let's let's figure this out. Yeah. Um I think for me, I will be honest that ministry, right? Ministry is my purpose in life, right? So having and being a builder, so not being in it, doing something else and not being connected to it and figuring out ways to do it to me is not good for me because I know, like, we're all responsible for living out what we talk to God about in private. Mm -hmm. What my wife talked to God about in private, I don't know. And how she got to live it out, I don't know what they talked about. They might not have talked about nothing. He might just be saying, go ahead on oh, we and about doing something. that, right? But it might be something. She <laughs> might talk to him about, Lord, you know, bless me to do this. And there might be certain endeavors. Well, mine and God conversation was, God, I'll do what you said. Yes, you said. So it's like when I'm, I, I'm trying to navigate what that looks like. And I was like, I don't know. And so it was really, really, really hard. Thank, thank God, though. I met a, a good brother, man, a good friend of mine. I met him. Um, when I was in Richmond, he came down to, cons- to do a consult, ends up moving, coming back to Dallas where he's at. And we connected, man. And, you know, he, God has blessed him with uh, a ministry that he's coming in and he's really building it out. It's like, hey, man, you know, um, I'm doing this, man. No pressure, man. You know, come check it out. So I've been able to kind of jump in and, help, I mean, a lovely community of believers. Um, I've been able to jump in and kind of help them build and in helping them build it's like having a screwdriver and using it for a screwdriver. It's like it has brought strength back to me. Challenge, like anything, and I'm a good, I like fussing about stuff all the time. But on the other end, I'm finding myself feeling like, okay, I'm feeling a little bit like normal. So that's been a blessing. But my God, was it hard for me? Hard but I for will me. say, although during this transition, we both didn't have jobs per se, nine to fives, not both of us. God has provided. Yes. He's been so gracious yep. and loving to our family. And yeah. we have not missed a beat. We have not lacked or Absolutely. wanted for anything. Absolutely. So I am definitely forever grateful. And I feel like even during that season, although my husband, he was so clouded with, I'm the man I'm supposed to be able to provide. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I saw my my vision for this season was supposed to be a little bit different and it didn't work out Absolutely. as such. Absolutely. Yes. God's hand was here. Yes. He was with us yes. all the while, and he's yes. still with us. You, and I, you, you said that great. Well, you think about Moses. A, we don't know exactly much. how long it took before he saw the promise. But God said, go to an unknown country and leave your father. Leave your kinsmen. Leave, leave what you're familiar with so that you can partner with me. And, you, and we've only been here for six months, absolutely. really. It's really, really only been really about six, seven six months. months. You're right. Hasn't right. been long. It hasn't been long at all. It feels like six years. It feels like six I, years. I, I will be honest. But I know God is at work and he he's going to get the glory even out of this he, season. He, he I is. know he is. I like what you said about Moses. As a matter of fact, uh, Pastor Brandon preached about mm-hmm. that. He preached it on Sunday. Uh, he was just talking about how we would never have, if you think about it, even practically, we would never know who Abraham was. If there was no if Abram, he, if, and if, if he didn't no move, Abram, if he didn't, if he didn't go, he would have remained Abram. He had to go. He got his name changed in the name, move. He got his name changed in the move. And not only that, uh, when it talks about on the backside of that, when he, we were, we were uh, reading in the scripture, it talks about how he said he has to leave from his his, his father, his, father yeah. his father's house, the land that he's familiar with. Um, it was just so many different criteria that he had to actually leave mm-hmm. away from. And you think about that. That was his influence, his right. family. His just all of those things um, that that God had called him to move. That he away felt from. like he he probably felt like he needed those things. But because of that, he was he was uh, he made him a father of many nations. Many nations. So 
So I there's get that. greatness that's going to come there's out of greatness. this. But I will say this while I'm thinking let's about talk, it. Let's talk about that. Because I had um, a young lady reach out to me and she said that God spoke to her yep. and he told her to even move here. Yep. You have to partner with God in your planning. Yes. Faith without works is dead. Yep. You have to write the vision. Yep. Asking and seeking God for clarity on the steps. Yep. Because man will plan his ways, but God will direct and order his steps. So God will ultimately decide what will happen in the end, but we have to partner with him and we have to do our part in the process. And you know what? I like the word strategy in this Ask, season. And, and that's what to, I've been praying for at the start of this year, yep. for divine strategy. Divine strategy. And Ask I, him for strategy. I, and I asked... Uh, I asked... Um, one of the uh, elders, even before we left, it, she was like, you know, what do you need prayer for? I said that God would give me strategy and mm-hmm. how to approach this season. Because I'm going to be honest, I used to look at strategy. Now, let me say this. Strategy still can be, uh, it still can be uh, a hindrance, right? If you, if you if it's your depend strategy. on your thought process and you're like, no matter what happens, here's what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it my way. Mm-hmm. But when you submit for your divine divine, strategy. you submit that strategy back to, to God, God. Yes. And you look at strategy instead of your way and your plans, you say, God, this is a faith document. Like this is a this is me documenting my faith in you mm-hmm. and what you're gonna do. I think it's a little bit it's a little bit different. So to j- pick it back off of you with the young lady, I would say if you're feeling that urge now, first step is partner with God in prayer. Ask him to give you more strategy and understanding and peace. I would also look around and find someone that you would consider to, to that you respect even spiritually for counsel. Mm-hmm. Find them. Say, hey, look, I want to run this by you. What do you think? Um, I would also say not spiritually. I was. I would also on the practical side find someone that you know that you respect that has traveled, that has moved, what that areas has transitioned. Are Start. What you know? What evaluating were some of the, things, the areas and yeah, the land. What are some of the things that they did? The people mm-hmm. that moved, like talk to them about their experience. Their experience, so you can gather, so you can count the cost. Count the cost. Count is the cost big. <laughs> is huge. Now, I'm not saying count the cost and co- and, and, and allow no. the cost to cause you to back away from being or obedient to abort. Yeah. or to abort. But what I am saying is. Survey the land. Survey the land. Understand the surroundings and terrain. And then after you do that, you submit it to God and you say, God, I have all of this. Now, whatever you want to do. But don't think, but listen, don't think that God's going to do all the work. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's expecting us to have a part in it. God's job is to do the things that we can't do. Right. If there's something that you can't yeah, do, your butt you better do, be doing it. You better, you you better hit, be doing it. You, zoom in. Your butt better be doing right, it. It's like God, because just, if your butt don't do it, it won't get done. It won't get done. And yes, God will be gracious and yep. kind because this is who our God is. Yep. But you're going to feel the sting of it along the way. But let me say this. In that, the key to it is, and Martha said it first, partner with God, partner with Holy Spirit. Yield your will, yield your heart, your ear, everything to Holy Spirit and allow him to lead you. Because there are some instances where he'll cause you to do something like that's just out of this yeah, world. Yeah, now if God gave you specifics. You got to go with it. You got to go with that. You got to go with it. But if he left it open, you, then you got to, I mean, I feel like either either way, even if he gave you exact specifics, you, you, you got to follow his go plan. With, but yeah, either exactly. way, you there's some work that you have there's to do. There's some work that you have to do. He, he won't do it all. No. He can he? Yes. But he won't do it all. Yeah. Okay? Because he's given us dominion over the land. He has. He, he very much so has. Hi. Yeah. Okay. He certainly has. Y'all hear? She going. <laughs> she rolling. We oh, my, I, but I know many of you are going to also want to know what are some good areas in Dallas? Which ones are family friendly? Do you want to talk about that? Or were you trying to say something? I was still going to say a little something. I was okay. Hey, I'm sorry. So uh, what I'll say is, got through that. We've been here six months. Uh, been a, been a, still been a challenge, but we're kind of coming out of that uh, still. Uh, we in the process of this, we have you know we change constantly, but in the process, like in in every major transition, understand this: you get the opportunity to grow, or you get the opportunity to decline. Mm-hmm. And we could have declined. But I feel like we are growing even in the challenge because we 
taking what we learned and we're still at it. It's like still shh, chugging. We're still chugging. It's like, all right, cool. We got it. We learned some lessons and we're pushing through. Mm-hmm. And so just know through every transition, you got two, you got two choices. Either you develop, you allow it to develop you or you allow it to destroy you. Right. So anybody here that's going through transition, I would say gird yourself strongly, be prayerful, because you can you can advance, but on the other side of transition, you're gonna change. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna be one way or the other. Either you're gonna change for the best or you're gonna decline. And I, I think we're changing for the better. In that though, we are relearning even ourselves right now. And each, we're lear- and relearning each other. Relearning ourselves and we're relearning each other in that um transition because some we've changed. Right. And so it is a different kind of work. Mm-hmm. And if you're in a marriage, you, you get it. If you have been in it longer than us, and if you haven't, you know, there are seasons where you're gonna have to, you're gonna constantly have to relearn. Mm-hmm. It's only when you stop wanting to learn who you're with that you might as well you're counsel trouble. it. <laughs> when you get to the place where you're like, okay, I'll, like if you're still saying I don't get them, that means you just haven't learned yet. It's a good thing, even though But yeah, some of it might that. be that you haven't tried. There you go, and even and then sometimes you could be trying. That's for another. And they video. just anybody some weird, but sometimes we'll say that for another sometimes video. you could be trying, and they're just they're just them. They're just in another language. <laughs> you need Rosetta Stone. But uh, so with that being said, going through transition, don't get God has provided. He, he has provided. Y'all, when I tell you God has provided, I remember. But seasons. I ain't gonna lie. He's providing, but I, I'm not gonna lie. Let's be honest. Sometimes we don't like the way he provides. Uh, love you guys tremendously. Listen, before we get off, if we can, just simply ask you guys to just kind of where you are. I don't know what's happening. Maybe your family is there. Maybe you might be in the car. I don't know where you are, but if you can kind of settle yourself, we just want to take a moment and pray uh, really quick at the end of this. Uh, so, Lord, we just thank you for um, uh, being God, for yes, being Lord. sovereign. Uh, we thank you for being our Father, and we thank you for uh, us being able to come to you as your children unashamed. And my prayer is, God, that not only would you continue to bless our family, yes, Lord. our union in marriage and covenant and bringing us closer uh, and, and the destiny that you place on our, our lives, but we pray unselfishly for those who tune in to watch us, to yes, tune Father, in, yes, to gain inspiration, to tune in, to uh, even show support. We pray that you would, one by one, Go and individually touch their lives, their yes, families, yes, Lord, their finance, God, their destiny, their futures. That you would even to those who are I watching who may be you. at a place in life where they've uh, even come to a point of maybe turning away or being disappointed yes, in their faith. I pray, Bring God, that, that you Lord. in this moment would use us as a sign to remind them that you are still God. Yes, Lord. And not only that, you are still good. And so, God, now we pray that you would make yourself evident in their life and give them a revelation of Jesus Jesus like never before. Touch every heart, every mind, healed every body. Uh, In Jesus' name, name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Love you. Love you guys.